Right, so economic sanctions on Israel. Frankly, the entire world should be imposing full-on boycott, divestment and sanctions on them right now for what they're doing in Gaza. But the only country prepared to actually do anything along those lines and show some full-throated solidarity with Palestine and follow it up with defiance and action and disgust at the rest of the world, frankly, happens to be the poorest country in the Middle East, Yemen. Itself, having been subjected to bombardment from Saudi Arabia for some time, has been on the receiving end of the US at a time or two as well. But despite being rather poor, Yemen has got geography on its side and then some when it comes to inflicting some form of sanction against Israel. And it's kicking them straight in the shipping lanes. It's common knowledge that the Suez Canal from the Mediterranean Sea into the Red Sea and vice versa is a global shortcut for commerce. But when you talk about a narrow canals to squeeze goods through, people don't tend to think about the other end of the Red Sea, which is the Bab el Mandeb Strait, which translates into the Gate of Tears or Gate of Grief. And grief is what it is giving Israel and anyone else trying to supply them right now. The Bab el Mandeb Strait is only 16 miles across at its narrowest between Yemen and Djibouti in East Africa. It's also perilous to navigate due to other geographical factors. Therefore, anything passing through the strait, heading north towards Israel, perhaps, can easily be reached by missiles fired by the Houthis in Yemen. An economic blockade, in effect, of anyone trying to take stuff from or to Israel. But as fine as economic sanctions might be, when it comes to Israel, you see, the rest of the world seems to have a very big problem with that. Right, so Yemen, they've imposed economic sanctions on Israel by basically saying any vessel attempting to round their coast and Yemen being on the southwestern corner of the Arabian Peninsula as it is, they will have to be rounding pretty much their entire coastline of coming from the east. And of course, the narrowness of the Bab el-Mandeb Strait means they can make good on their promise of sanctions and aggression against anyone trying to deliver to Israel. And they have been. The Israeli port of Eilat is basically closed as shipping being received there is down 80%. 12 major shipping firms, including CMA, CGM, Maersk, MSC and Hapag Lloyd, have all stopped moving tankers through the Red Sea due to the serious risk of attack. A Norwegian tanker heading for Israel was attacked and caught fire, though fortunately nobody was injured. As a result of all of this going on, the cost of marine insurance has gone through the roof for Israel now, and freight is having to choose the very old-fashioned route of going all the way around Africa to avoid Yemen, sending the price of goods soaring. As far as we're concerned, though, did you notice that Rishi Sunak is now called for a ceasefire, agreeing with what David Cameron said the other day about the need for a sustainable ceasefire? And did you also notice that Keir Starmer finally caught up and agreed with that too, just today? Leadership with Keir Starmer, jumping as soon as someone else already has. He reminds me of those queues of penguins waiting to jump off an ice floe in case there's a leopard seal waiting in the water. He'll be the one that always jumps in last. I wonder what could have prompted that, though. What could it have been? Well, Sunak's call for a ceasefire came literally one hour after oil giant BP said they were no longer going to sail through the Red Sea due to attacks on vessels. Suez Canal effectively cut off. BP going all the way around Africa now too, it would seem. You can just smell the panic in number 10 as the th thought of, oh my God, the price of oil is going to skyrocket. Such is the amazing power of sanctions. They don't just affect the target country, but anyone allying with them who won't call out and demand a cessation to hostilities. Though, of course, the current ceasefire our politicians are calling isn't permanent or immediate. It's more of just a longer humanitarian pause. But, of course, Israel can't be allowed to be sanctioned. Israel is sacrosanct. Israel has to be placed on a pedestal. God forbid anybody attack Israel. It doesn't matter that, matter that they're practicing apartheid. It doesn't matter that they're occupying and settling land that isn't theirs. That they have killed 24,000 people, including 10,000 children, in just two and a half months. These Yemeni people have to be put back in their box. So a coalition has been formed amongst Western countries mostly to do just that. Forget spending more money on aid for Palestine. They can find money to go out and protect Israel from a bunch of uppity Houthis who need to know their place though, can't they? The UK, Bahrain, the only Arab country involved, shame on them. Canada, France, Italy, Holland, Norway, Spain, the mighty bastion that is the Seychelles and of course the US itself, are going to protect ships bound for Israel, apparently, under Operation Guardians of Prosperity. How sick can you get to call it that? That's disgusting. What was notable, though, is that despite Saudi Arabia having 
be, you know, having had years long beef with Yemen, they refuse to be a part of this. Well, Yemen have come back on this news, of course. Right now, the U.S. Eisenhower, U.S. Uh, flight car uh, aircraft carrier is 70 miles off the Djibouti coast looking to try and get up through the Bab el Mendeb Strait but thanks to the narrowness and difficulty of traveling through the strait at the moment Houthis from Yemen are managing to hold up a US aircraft carrier where it is with nothing more than four speedboats any escalation by this so-called operation guardians of prosperity will be returned by them but at the end of the day all Yemen are demanding is that Israel stop bombing Gaza. Instead of working towards a diplomatic solution to do just that, though, the US, yet again, with our help and that of others, have decided military action against those standing by Palestine is the justifiable response. It is not. It is twisted. It is sick. It is barbaric. And we condemn it. And I despise anybody supporting that. A spokesperson for the Houthis has said, even if America succeeds in mobilizing the entire world, our military operations will not stop, no matter the sacrifices it costs us. The Houthis will only halt their attacks if Israel's crimes in Gaza stop and food, medicines and fuels are allowed to reach its besieged population. There is no arguing with that rationale. At the end of the day, there is no interruption to vessels unless they are Israeli-owned or headed to Israel. It is Israel being blockaded by Yemen. If the US and the mad fools that are following them want to turn that narrow strait into a war zone, then nobody can use it. It is economic idiocy as well as military idiocy. 12% of all global trade passes through the Red Sea. There will be huge, massive knock-on effects to this. The West is bemoaning the economic risk to oil transportation. Oh, won't you think of the bloody inflation? Because everything still rolls around oil. But rather than take a common sense approach towards backing a meaningful permanent ceasefire by forcing Israel's hands to down tools to stop bombing and killing indiscriminately, which even the US has admitted that is what they're doing, especially when it is becoming harder to defend them. Netanyahu has now been bragging about having been the block to a two state solution for the last 30 years. But Israel have never meant it, despite all the conversations on that that they've taken the entire world for fools, and yet the entire world, it seems, is still hell-bent on protecting them and standing by them. Something that should, on its own, make defending Israel impossible for any nation going forwards. They are stirring up an economic hornet's nest that the British public won't forgive them for, for feeling the repercussions of again, so soon after having been shafted by the energy companies due to inflation. This incident, the economic impact of this, could send inflation up again. But watch Sunak blame Yemen or blame Hamas for energy bills rises next time. Rumoured to be on the horizon anyway, apparently, because, and you will love this, the energy companies need to recover unpaid bills. People who couldn't afford to pay and didn't. So we will all have to pay more so they make up for their lost profits off our backs. Isn't that a nice little Christmas present from Rishi Sunak? All of this, if it comes to pass, will all be because our leaders, the leaders of those countries involved in attacking Yemen for daring to stand up for Palestine, because they preferred that option than to make Israel adhere to international law, stop bombing occupied territory and stop killing civilians in their tens of thousands. They hide behind the fact Hamas are holding 130 Israeli hostages still, yet nothing ever gets said about the fact Israel holds 7,000 Palestinian hostages, has rendered almost every hospital in Gaza defunct, has still been taking more hostages from the West Bank, which isn't even involved, has targeted refugee camps and killed almost a 100 journalists. War crime after war crime after war crime, and rather than confront that, challenge that, face that, as Yemen are, they put together an armed escort to defend Israel instead. Functionally, Israel is and always has been a Western construct to put a foothold in the Middle East for reasons around oil and geographical trade power and having some sort of influence in amongst all of these Arab nations. Right now, the plan is falling apart and failing because Israel are led by the most batshit hard right wingers ever. And because Yemen are proving how powerful a little country like them can be and the damage to trade they can cause. Just goes to show all the power these Arab countries actually do have. Will the US be stupid enough to go to war with Yemen? Again, it should be said, to protect Israel's right to commit genocide? Well, I wouldn't be betting against it, just as I wouldn't bet against Sunak or Starmer riding on Biden's coattails behind him. 
Israel's out of control. It has to be reined in, has to be held to international law, just as every other country on the planet is. Doing that is way overdue. Palestine should be recognised as a state. The occupation needs to end and nothing less than that will frankly do anymore. The world wants to see this situation resolved now. Yemen is leading the way. The only way anyone is listening to right now. Israel need to back off of gas and oil into the mix as well. And this video here will show you why BP has every reason to be nervous of travelling through Yemeni waters right now. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers folks.